All right. Today, I'm here with Jeff Gallus of fullmo.org. Um, I interviewed Jeff about a year ago, I think, um, for Living on Crypto in Germany. And Jeff is back to discuss the Lightning Hack Day event that's taking place later this month. Um, Jeff, how are you? Good. How are you? Uh, it's great, great to be back. And I'm really happy to talk to you about an awesome event coming up in 21 days. Fittingly for Bitcoin, I mean, 21. It's always a magic yeah. number. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, so this time the event, it, it's taking place outside of Germany, as I understand it. Yes, um, we're going to go to Istanbul in Turkey, which these days seems like a pretty good place to go if you're a Bitcoiner. Um, because I guess it's one of the talking points in many for many people when talking about the necessity of Bitcoin and in that sense, inflation. Um, I mean, it's just one of the many things that, that's happening in, in, in the sense which, which is making Turkey interesting for Bitcoiners. Um, it's also just a great place to be. There's a, a good community of Bitcoiners um, in specifically in Istanbul, but all over the country. And, and I guess this makes it a good place to go there and have a Bitcoin only event um, or maybe even Lightning Network only event. And it's called the Lightning Hack Day, which is not the first hack day we're having, but it's the first time we're going to, to Istanbul. And from what people tell me, it's actually the first Bitcoin only event in Istanbul ever. So really excited to, to, to be there and meet a lot of the lo local community, but also meet the international Lightning community again. We're ex I think it's, there's going to be a bunch of internationals as well as local people. So that's, that's going to be great. That sounds awesome. Um, yeah, Turkey has a sim similar currency crisis, like, like kind of like Venezuela or, or Nigeria, where the currency is being devalued at an astounding rate. Um, did you see recently that the president of El Salvador went on a state visit to Turkey and met with the president uh, or prime minister of Turkey? Did, did he go there or did he come visit him in El Salvador? Um, I, I was under the impression that the, uh, Bukele went to Turkey and he was like tweeting out about it and stuff. But I, yeah, I, I mean, I, I saw the pictures. Um, I actually don't have a whole lot of context other than that um, a couple of people started um, posting breaking news. Um, Turkey is going to adopt Bitcoin as legal tender, which um, I don't think is going to happen too soon. Um, from my understanding, it's rather the opposite that Turkey is not exactly friends with Bitcoin and um, the president kind of said something similar to the likes of um, they should fight against Bitcoin or start a war with Bitcoin. So in that sense, I don't think we should get our hopes up that Turkey is going to be hyper Bitcoinized anytime soon. But nonetheless, I think it's um, it's a good country to have a Bitcoin event and just to to check it out and um, having these news bits, you know, like El, the president of El Salvador meeting with Turkey or Turkish officials and um, Turkey exp unfortunately experiencing hyperinflation right now is also something that's interesting from a historical perspective to see like what it actually means if you live there and you're on the ground and maybe also see how Bitcoin can help. But at the same time, of course, it's nothing we actually like, I, I wouldn't wish anything on like hyperinflation on anybody, um, but at the same time, academically speaking, it's, it's also interesting to see what, what this actually means in people's lives. Um, uh, so. For the Hack Day event, uh, how many people are you expecting to, to attend this event? Well, uh, we, are, we have like a max capacity of 200 people and I hope that's also the turn, what the turnout is going to be. But in any case, um, maybe, maybe that it's going to be half, I don't know. But um, in any case, it's going to be great people. We, we have a bunch of people coming from um, different Lightning Network implementations and a lot of people that are what we call builders, people that work on free and open source software projects, um, like software projects like BTC Pay Server, for example, but also hardware projects like um, node implementations like the Raspberry Blitz or the Lightning ATM, which is this little box you can build yourself to, to sort of um, present. Uh, like it's, it's basically a coin acceptor that um, cha uh, changes your change to into a Lightning invoice or a Lightning um, LN URL 
payout um, address which you can use to demonstrate how, how lightning works in, in hack spaces or little cafes or bars and Alan, um, Alan bits are coming some people from um, Alan bits which is basically like it's almost like a Swiss knife for for lightning you can use it for ticketing or for faucets and all kinds of things really so um, it's it's cool to have this this open source development community coming coming to Istanbul and um, seeing like what people are working on and, and basically connecting the community and hopefully like teaching some newcomers about certain projects, helping them set up nodes or build ATMs, but also uh, opening a platform sort of for, for people to, to kind of further their projects or onboard new developers, get some interest for into open source contributions and, and just also have the opportunity to hang out again for a whole weekend because I mean, there were some events over the last month or so, but in reality, so when, when COVID-19 happened, we had to cancel two planned hack days. Uh, one, they were like going to happen two weeks after, but we had to cancel them. One was happening, was going to happen in Barcelona, the other one in Munich. So we didn't really have a proper hack day for almost three years now. And it's now that I'm saying it, it kind of seems unreal, but uh, it's been quite a while. So um, I'm also kind of, I'm also really excited to see like what new ideas there are and uh, what what the outcome will be of, of this this lightning hack day. Um, as for the format, we call it hack day because, well, it's it's not really a hack day. It's really three days, <laughs> um, and it's basically like an unconference or a bar camp if you're familiar with that. Uh, so, which means there's no specific preset agenda but we try to invite as many people possible, also knowledgeable people, and they will give more or less impromptu talks or have workshops or sessions or hack on, do some coding. So it's really an open format that kind of um, gets everybody together under one agenda, the Lightning Network or building the Lightning Network and just see what, what we can do to kind of further it and to aggregate, aggregate ideas and to speed up certain ideas and, and just um, give a platform that's really lightning and building specific to and also just to meet friends again you know there's um we, we had some great events even during COVID 19 we had a big event in germany which was german speaking only and of course we had advancing bitcoin in el salvador which was also really heavily lightning network focused sorry did i say advancing i meant adopting bitcoin in El Salvador in San Salvador, El Salvador in November. We also have advancing Bitcoin coming up in London um, first week of March. So right after the lightning hack day. Um, so excuse my slip up, um, but there's not that many um, ch chances to meet and Turkey in that respect is also a good place to meet because the COVID-19 restrictions are relatively low um, in comparison to other countries, namely, for example, Germany, which is pre still pretty high up. And we couldn't actually have had this hack day in Germany because we um, legally we wouldn't be allowed to do it. But in Turkey, we can, which is also um, one of the reasons why we're going to go to that, uh, I think, exciting city. Awesome. Um, I know... Fulmo has kind of spearheaded um, do-it-yourself lightning projects like the change machine that you were talking about before we started recording and uh, lightning ATMs and things like that. Are you guys going to be premiering like any new projects at, at the event? Um, well, not specifically. I mean, it, it's, it's not an event that's designed to make like big announcements, <laughs> that kind of stuff. It's more about gradual process. Um, I mean, I mentioned the Raspberry Blitz earlier. That's a Bitcoin and Lightning full node run on Raspberry Pi. And that kind of um, had an evolution over the, the first couple, five events so far. And um, another hack day is always a chance to, to iterate and build on it and integrate more projects and like change little things. Um, but there's also um, newer projects coming like Synonym, uh, John Cavallo's project. Um, which is at, which uh, like uh, or Albi for example the browser extension 
they are also coming. So you do have projects that are that are not uh, sort of as well known or not as aged yet. So there is a great opportunity to to either to to learn about those projects, but also see like where people could contribute potentially individually, or maybe just take the weekend to to dive to deep dive into it and see like where where's the current development, like what projects are there that I find interesting. And I guess like everybody's pretty busy. So it's also good just to take this weekend and go there to go to a different location, leave everything behind that's affecting your daily life and just focus on one specific topic and be able to talk to, to the makers, to the creators behind it. And maybe just, I mean, as trivial as it might sound, it's also, it might also be helpful to the developers just to get, to help somebody install a browser extension and see like what the pain points are, where they're going through. And this is just, sort of a, an accelerated learning and building experience for the whole weekend. And um, also to make it fun a bit, we, we are going to have like a little live performance slash party on Friday night to sort of open the event. And we have, we've invited a, um, a somewhat famous, I'm not going to spoil the name yet, but um, meme creator that's been um, pretty popular and he has a Turkish background. So um maybe now you can guess who it is but i don't want to spoil it yet <laughs> so so there's um, also a certain a certain element of fun involved awesome uh lawrence has joined us um lawrence do you have any questions you want to hop in with yeah i mean i i don't know huge amounts about it but like obviously i i understand like what a, a hackathon or hack days usually are um where, whereabouts is it hosted I, I might have missed that um so we're going to Go in Istanbul, and the the place we're going to meet up. It's a um, co-working space. It's called Kobak. I hope that's um, pronounced correctly. Um, it's a relatively new, pretty big co-working space that, for our purposes, can host up to two hundred people, where there's enough space to have presentations, but also enough rooms to have like smaller work groups or just. I mean, you could also just come there and sit in a corner with your laptop if you want, um, and that's situated in. The on, on part of the historic peninsula where you have all the big historic mosques and the the Turkish bazaar and all these um, sort of historic institutions that are not related to Bitcoin and Lightning Network but still make Istanbul a nice place to go anyways. And there's some people who, who just use this as sort of as a workation, if you will, who come a bit earlier, work there in a nice scene, have a change of scenery for once or take their significant others for, for a couple nice days to take a winterly swim in the freezing Bosporus. <laughs> it sounds pretty, sounds pretty nice, man. I guess like, uh, I guess two questions I've got on it. First, obviously I, I'm a massive fan of like more and more physical meetups um, because yeah, obviously there's that period with COVID where it just feels like no one was meeting up in person. And I think a lot of people got into crypto around then as well and got into lightning and Bitcoin more so, and then haven't really had a chance to actually talk to someone about it in person. And it is a big difference, like meeting with someone and actually, I think there's a, there's a, it's, it's awesome that we're doing physical meetups again for people to um, be able to kind of feel each other's passion for real and learn from each other. Um, I guess like, uh, is, is there a way that people in, can participate in any way by not being there or is it, is it strictly physical? Is there, is there any kind of sharing online or anything like that? Or? Well, the priority is to, to make this a sort of physical experience. Um, there might be some ways to participate. Um, I mean, you could always like, uh, join up with one of, of the teams and, and like coordinate via, um, chat where we still have a we have a, um, a metamos instant running instance running and we will likely live stream um optionally live stream some of the talks um that kind of th thing but we really want to like focus on on the live experience and um, not really make it fully hybrid uh just also to encourage people to get together really i mean and as much as i would love to I don't know, get, get thousands of people involved via online means. Um, I'm honestly, personally, a little bit tired of doing all this stuff online and just uh, as, as, as many, like as great as it is for, for a global community, but you just need um, to, get to, get, to get together every now and then and see and kind of deeply dive into the meat space and um, focus on the here and now and the, the, the physical being because 
the virtual being is, is you'll have that a lot again. So, um, that, and that might just be my, that's maybe just my personal preference. Um, I agree with you. So yeah, that's fine. So. Yeah, I completely agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you allowed to talk about like who you guys have slotted to, uh, be giving talks? Um, of course. Um, well, the, the idea of the, of the format is that we don't really have, um, sort of pre-scheduled talks, if you will. But um, I'm, I'm going to give like some examples of who's coming just so we get some, and all these people are coming and they have some projects and, and they can talk about things. But um, the point is that we only on Saturday morning, the 26th, we will meet on location and everybody's going to talk what they're going to talk about and see what the interest is and kind of, and, and we have like an impromptu schedule. Um, so for now we have, um, for example, Carla Kirkone from Lightning Labs um, is likely coming. She still has to sort out some visa stuff uh, and that's also COVID-19 related, but um, she'll likely come. Rene Pickard, he, he'll, I assume he's going to talk about um, some routing problems. Uh, we have Giacomo Zucco who's, um, who can talk about anything really. And if, if you let him, <laughs> he'll probably, um, so um, he's, he's probably, he's like a well-known Bitcoin maximalist. I would say he's basically also a generalist who has a lot of, um, in my opinion, very valuable insights and opinions about a lot of things, Bitcoin, decentralization and lightning as well. We have uh, Roots, who's the main developer for the Raspberry Blitz. Ben Ark is coming, who's sort of this almost prototype of a, of a Bitcoin Hacker, he's done so many projects uh, and right now he's working on Ellen Bits with a bit more focus, but um, he has so many cute little tinkering projects. Um, one of the things he did that is super silly and probably not world changing, but um, still kind of fun is, is the th um, he has a tip tipping application that you can integrate into a chat like the one we are having right now. And if somebody um, sends a couple sets towards his QR code, he has a machine that will slap you. <laughs> and, but that's essentially triggered by, by lightning payment. Um, and this is probably the worst example I can give, but this is kind of what's stuck into my head because it's kind of so graphic and it's um, so fun. And, but this is also the, the fun thing about kind of this, um, at least at the early lightning hack days, was that nobody, you, you have a lot of room to experiment and to tinker and just do stuff that you kind of like and maybe it's silly and you never know what's going to come out of it but in the end something might come out of it um so there's um open arms is coming who's really strong on privacy and um has is also contributed to to different projects with like a strong privacy focus um, we we have the bless command which is another hardware project um as i mentioned earlier synonym john cavallo is coming they are basically building, in my understanding, a layer three on Lightning and they want to kind of um, create a whole eco ecosystem based on Lightning. And he's going to talk about that. Galois is going to attend with some developers. They are responsible for building the um, Bitcoin Beach app. And so they're basically building Bitcoin banking infrastructure. And Bitcoin Beach, if, in case you, you're not familiar with that, is, is, is the application that is used in El Sonte in El Salvador for sort of a community banking project. So it's a lightning wallet with, which has multi-custodial key management, uh, multi-party key management. So it's basically sort of a Bitcoin community bank run on lightning, if you will. Um, I hope that's a fair description. We have uh, BTC Pay Service coming, which is the open source payment infrastructure for, for Bitcoin. Um, also in the spirit of be your own bank, uh, Bitcoin design community is attending, um, building open source Bitcoin design and help, like uh, trying to standardize and make appealing design for, for Bitcoin projects. Um, I mentioned Albi earlier, it's a browser extension, um, Boomi is coming. Um, and that is just, just a couple of um, examples. They, not everybody's going to be announced. There's a couple of, going to a couple of people that are just uh, uh, one, one more person that um, comes to mind. And it's constantly Nick. He built um, peer swaps 
if that's the proper name, I think it's peer swaps. So it's um, a lightning peer to peer lightning liquidity service. Um, also trustless, he introduced that in El Salvador at adopting Bitcoin as well. So just two or three months ago, three months ago. And um, so, so, so all these, like, basically we, we, I hope we're going to be able to look at the, the status quo of where, where all the projects are. Of course, there's, um, the, the community has grown so big or the lightning ecosystem that you cannot have the whole ecosystem on one hack day anymore. That was possible in the early days, so maybe three years ago. And maybe it's possible at conferences like the lightning conference, which we had in Berlin also almost three years ago and adopting Bitcoin in El Salvador. But for this, it's going to be a small event. So you can only take a certain peak at certain projects. And, but at the same time, you have the, the chance to really like engage with fellow developers or, or fellow users, Lightning or Bitcoin power users, the local Turkish community, hopefully. And it's also going to build, in regards to the Turkish community, having these focused events on one spot usually also combines people on a local level, uh, um, not combines, but uh, introduces people on a local level to each other that maybe didn't even know each other beforehand. So. One of the impacts we hopefully have is that the, the local community is also strengthened. There's a, a native, a, a nascent, but already strong Bitcoin community. And there's a couple of com companies that are um, pretty Bitcoin centric, like um, BTC Turk is a Bitcoin exchange in Turkey, which has millions of users. Uh, but I guess for now, they only operate in, um, in Turkey so far. But they they really like want to want to push this forwards and and hopefully the, having an event like this um, also helps just the local community to get stronger and get more connected. So um, this is sort of a side result or well, it's not really a side result. I mean it's it's also a networking ev event and to build lasting relationships uh, from between Bitcoiners on all levels. Um, I did have one last question. Um, if somebody who's watching this wants to attend the event, do you still have space for more people? I, I know you kind of said it was a little limited on, on space. It's limited, but we still have space at this moment. So if you go to lightninghackday.fulmo.org, you can get a ticket there and also um, take a look at locations, um, participants and all that. And if that's too hard, just go to Fulmo Lightning on Twitter and you also find the link there. The hashtag is lightning hack day IST for Istanbul. And um, it's on February 25th to 27th. So the last weekend of February 2022 this year. And we have, so tickets is, so basically we don't really charge a whole lot for a conference, for an unconference that lasts almost three days and includes food and drinks as well. So there's going to be, um, for the time people are there, there's going to be food and drinks. So you can basically just stay there and don't have to worry about that. Um, if you, So for people who already have like prior experience, who have existing projects or contributed before, um, the ticket is, is 20, uh, the equivalent of 21 euros in Satoshi. And for people who are m more like kind of, are not yet, building but want to contribute um, it's 99 euros in satoshi and that basically covers your cost uh, we we do have sponsors who, who pay for the event and who make it possible and um, so that's for now that's folgo ventures that's shift crypto who's um, doing the bitcoin hardware with a bitbox hardware wallet that is uh, voltage which um is supplying ready-made sort of cloud nodes, if you will. And Pocket Bitcoin from Switzerland, it's a Bitcoin DCA service. And so I don't forget anybody. Um, it's also Synonym, which we already talked about. Um, so sorry for the shameless plug, but it's really helpful. Um, and thank you so much to, to the sponsors because they are not only contributing with um, money, but also knowledge. They send you over people to help, like to meet the community, to to talk about pain points, to get feedbacks on their Bitcoin products, basically. And in the case of Shift Crypto, which is um, maybe important to mention because uh, it's relevant, they they offer three sort of sponsorships to developers who want to attend. 
So if you go, uh, so they pay for your flight and your accommodation and your ticket if you apply to them. And um, if you're an open source developer and you want to come to Istanbul, but you're a little low on your budget, uh, you don't really have an excuse anymore not, not to come. So um, I would uh, really appreciate it that, that they're doing this. And I hope this kind of kills the last excuse for anybody at least from Europe. I mean, admittedly, it's a bit far from the US, but still, historically speaking, the, the hack days were attended pretty well. Like we had people from Japan, from South Africa, from the US, even if to the, for the hack days in Berlin. So hopefully this is going to happen again. It's uh, interesting to hear about this kind of stuff that's going on. And I'm, honestly, it just makes me happy to see physical meetups and efforts going on. Because like one of the things that was really cool for me when I was in um, El Salvador was going to the... Uh, the room at the end, I don't remember what it was called, but it had like everyone doing like, just like had their computers out and they were, um, and, and also to see the um, Lightning um, ATM in person, because uh, I made my own one and I did it in like a cardboard box and I got it to work uh, and I was like super happy with myself because I'm not like Mr. Technically Minded, like I don't know how to be a developer, I don't know how to wire things, and all that, but I just did it anyway. Uh, so it's cool to see that in person and like all the people just getting up to different stuff as well and like, uh getting into teams it was, it was like really inspiring it made me feel like super excited for the future especially with lightning so um yeah I, i'm happy that you're doing it um it's awesome to awesome to see Good on and you, Jeff. i Good do have a question summer. um because when we met one year ago you, and we were talking about living on crypto did you ever do an episode on turkey no no i didn't but i'm really really ignorant about like who to contact to even get an interview I don't know of any like Turkish Bitcoiners. So maybe while you're there, you could uh, recommend someone to me. Yeah, I would, um, I would definitely love to keep do that, that in interview. mind. Yeah, because I'm also sure. interesting. Uh, I myself, I'm in a similar situation to you. Um, I mean, of course, I know about Turkey, but I don't know specifically about Bitcoin in Turkey. And I'm just learning about that. So um, it, would, it would just be interesting to to get some pointers starting from like um, where community hotspots, are there any spaces where you can um, pay with Bitcoin or Lightning and, and all that. And that's also a reason why I'm excited about Turkey because a bunch of Bitcoiners are going to go there. Maybe it's similar to the El Salvador effect. <laughs> there's yeah. just, excuse me, there, uh, there's just um, people from all over the world basically coming and like looking at Turkey with a Bitcoin, with a Bitcoin glasses on. And uh, that is, uh, also one of the effects and, and I'm definitely going to keep my eyes open and um, look for somebody who's f a local who might be able to talk to you about that because um, Please of course do. I want to um, go to as many Bitcoin places as possible when, when I'm in Istanbul and I think like the other ones, the other attendees are having s similar urges. <laughs> Yeah, no, please do. I know you're going to have a million other things on your mind, but um, if you do come across someone that, that would be a good interview, I, I would love to do the interview. Yeah, of course. Um, Jeff, uh, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for talking about the event. Uh, the well, hack day. Thank you for having Appreciate me. It.